solve large intractable problems. It's a new venture altogether. Your brain is a wild horse there. Because remember, writing is not a team sport. You are not selling horse carriages when there are cars. I want to be known only as a trusted advisor. More like a tourist. Play to Potential Podcast. As we bring the conversation uh, to a close, I go a couple of questions. One is more personal. I'm on this journey of being a coach and a sounding board for leaders, and you've been doing this for decades. One of the questions I keep asking myself is, how do I continue my growth uh, over time? Uh, when you look at your journey, Raghu, uh, you know, what's been the nature of evolution? Let's say if you look at the kinds of conversations you have with leaders today and compare them to maybe the kinds of conversations you had two decades back or three decades back, what are the kinds of dimensions in which you've grown uh, over time? See, if I look at my growth, na, I don't think, you know, a large part of my growth has been through dialogues with leaders mm. that we know in business, right? See, if I look back, I, I look at myself more as a action research person than a consultant or a coach or whatever, right? And there have been three areas which I have been working on in depth, right? One is, of course, systems engineering and how systems work. The second has been studying with Krishnamacharya and yoga mm -hmm. in depth. Now, really understanding the Yoga Sutras, the psyche, right? And the third has been process work with Professor Pullengarg, theater, mm -hmm. all of these kinds of things. I've always been innovating mm -hmm. between these three, right? And where can I innovate? I can only innovate in an organization, mm. right? So I've had this tremendous good fortune of CEOs who have trusted me, okay? So there's Mr. Subaya. Uh, where, you know, he, he and I have had a very nice relationship over time. And he invited me to work with Parry. It was a turnaround situation. Right, so I did my study, whatever, whatever. And then they asked me to work with Parry Sugar. Right, and there, um, you know, I was also, you know, I, my, my orientation towards working in organizations has been to look at operations first, you know, value creation and things like that, and then see how other factors are coming in to aid it or stop it, mm -hmm. right? So I actually, had to work with an organization, which I stayed in a house that Clive had stayed in, mm -hmm. you know, on my way to Nellikuppam. Okay, so some of the mindsets there are that archaic, right? And here you have to design an organization for response, because that's why it's going sick. There's some responsiveness issue there. So when I went in and I was working with the organization, uh, I had to contend with how to create a sense of flow and accountability this way, horizontal, versus the high colonized idea of vertical control. Mm. Right? So I played with it, and that's when this idea of, you know, a totally aligned organization came up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because by that time, you know, from my initial work and all that, I had also got in touch with our productivity consulting group from the US had got in touch with me, right? There was a guy called Norman Bodek, who is generally called Grandfather Lean now, but he was one of the first people to study uh, Japanese management, bring it to the world, phenomenal guy. So they were looking for Indian partners and they are Muktananda followers. Mm -hmm. So he was looking for a person who was in, involved with yoga and all that, so whatever, this combination happened. So I was learning these Japanese methods, which are very powerful, and obviously, I mean, it went very well with my OR thing. And you go into an organization, you start working with this horizontal thing and the management is vertical. So the culture, it does not fit flow. Hmm. 
right? So then I experimented with how do you get these mindsets to change, right? So like I told you, now I don't do behavioral lessons. I make exercises and games. So I made this game and made them play. And there are two teams. One is vertical. The other one is completely customer faced, mm -hmm. right? So how do you organize yourselves, whatever, whatever. The lessons are very, very clear. But I asked them to give themselves names, no? So one of these guys said, sir, we are an aligned organization. They are a boss face organization. Right? So that is when I developed this whole thing of what does it mean to create a totally aligned organization? Yeah, total alignment, which will go with TQM and TPM and all the rest of it. Interesting. Right. And Mr. Subaya was willing to, I mean, I discussed it with him he was, and the CEO was willing to look at all this and work with it. So once you do this, na, the organization then doesn't look vertical with mm. all these things. It looks like a rocket or a bird. Yeah, because like I told you, na, the CEO is at the edge. He's saying, this is where you go. So he's pointing the, the organization to the customer and the value chain gets aligned behind it. Mm. Right? Mm. And then you have the financial things that are helping this process. You have the human processes helping to make sure that flow is happening. Mm. Right? This is an agile organization. This cannot be an agile organization. Right? And then I had to work with uh, Pari, what became Pari Agro. Yeah, CWC was taken over. Again, colonial, no? So all these lovely tea fields with these huge colonial bungalows and all that. And when Parry took over, they're not that mindset. So we worked with it. And there the issue was, uh, how do you redefine work so that it's not so, you know, Sahib based and things like that. And there I developed this whole thing of saying, can we shift the focus of work from being oriented towards job towards being oriented towards my links mm. with people. Yeah, that's what comes from the earlier picture also. But here it had to be very uh, clearly defined. Mm -hmm. you know, we had the issue of redefining work itself. Mm -hmm. So like that, you know, I've been applying from this and that and developing answers to situations. And each of them would take a couple of years. But because the trust I had, you know, like, for example, Mahabharata, this book is actually based on 10 years of working with TCS on a program called the Leader Prepares. We've done about 100 odd things where the Mahabharata is the core. Wow. So I bring in theater. I bring in lots of ideas from yoga quietly. Yeah, we do some yoga practice, but also peppered in the, in the program and the Mahabharata insights. We actually make them do theater. We make them do a lot of these things over a five day, six day period. But the origin of that was in the Murugapa group, Very where I did a leadership training program, which was a two week thing at that time. One week was theater. The second was uh, outward bound. Right? So these have been really the incubating spaces. No? Um, see, while most of my initial work na, was actually supported by Mr. Subaya, um, there's a lot of uh, space and you know mm -hmm. trust, whatever I was given by the Handas, mm -hmm. Sushil Handa and Sunil Handa, where I worked with them for more than maybe 20, 25 years or more, I'm not sure. But it was like, you know, an ongoing thing mm -hmm. where I would look at the organization, there'd be a problem to be solved. How do you look at it? Bring all these elements together, mm -hmm. things like that. So at one point of time, na, they had to really look at their cash flow and things. Mm -hmm. So we set up this goal of saying, you know, what's one rupee going into the organization? When is it coming back? Right? So can you make that the one point around which the whole organization works? So from 240, 250 something, we said 120 and then 60 and so on. Right, so all of this, you set out the problem and then you discuss with the CEO saying, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try this. Okay, 
And then I'm bringing in something from systems theory, I'm bringing in something from theater, I'm bringing in something from yoga, right? And seeing how it works and working it through, right? And the other uh, space that I got was in TCS, where Mr. Ramadare and uh, his team gave a lot of space Mm -hmm. to first study the organization. There's a whole model that I've developed called the Tensegrity Mandala. Mm Yeah, which is based on Tripura Rahasya. Okay, so going back to Dharampal, study something, take the principle, see how it can be applied. Mm -hmm. Right, so the Tripura Rahasya talks about how the entire universe is actually a tetrahedron. Mm -hmm. Right, with Chit Shakti, Icha Shakti, Jnana Shakti, and Kriya Shakti. Right, and how, how this whole thing happens. Now, at the same time, there's a very good friend of mine called Prasad Kaipa, who's also used tetrahedrons. Mm -hmm. So I worked with this and developed a whole model of how to look at the organization. And then we worked a couple of years with the top management team and things like that, and then developed this training program Mm -hmm. and all that. So without these kinds of spaces and the trust that was placed on me by these CEOs and their team, uh, I wouldn't have developed anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the action research part, but which happened in that space with the CEOs willing to, you know, incubate these things. And for somebody who wants to get in touch with you, Raghu, are there any websites or any uh, places you would yeah, recommend them to? They can get in touch with Tao, mm-hmm. totallyalignedorganization.com mm-hmm. or fiveseatsofpower.in.com. Mm-hmm. 